Welcome to Save Your Thyroid, a podcast all about thyroid nodules. My name is Jennifer Holcomb, and I advocate for fellow patients suffering with this very common condition. Thyroid nodules impact 70% of adults in their lifetime, and the standard of care is surgical removal of half or all of the gland. But in recent years, safe and effective non-surgical treatment options have become available. In this podcast, I sit down with patients and physicians to discuss life with thyroid nodules, treatment options, and how to save the thyroid whenever possible. In today's episode, I have the pleasure of chatting with my good friend and mentor, Gary Bloom. Gary is the executive director of the nonprofit organization, Thyca Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association, which he founded in 1999 after his own battle with thyroid cancer. In today's conversation, we're going to talk all about Thyca's upcoming annual conference and how my patient organization, Save Your Thyroid, will be partnering with them in this effort. Gary, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Dan. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I co-founded, I didn't found. So. Oh, co-founded. I apologize for that error. Tell no, no. me a little bit then about the background of Thyca and how you founded it and who your co-founder was. In, back in 19, October of 1995, I was diagnosed with papillary thyroid cancer. And the internet was a very different place than it is today. Uh, it was a lot more text-based uh, environment. I would go out on the internet looking to meet people with thyroid cancer, and mostly I would meet people who had thyroid disease. There were a lot of thyroid disease discussion boards. Interestingly enough, most of those seem to have gone away. But in any event, I would try to find people who had thyroid cancer, and I would have very rudimentary amount of success with that. But over time, I did get to meet up with a number of really great people who had thyroid cancer. And we were all fairly like-minded that we felt that there was a need for education and support for all of us. And at the time, I was going to a center of excellence for my care at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., and I was getting great care uh, there. And then ultimately, I did move on, participate in a clinical trial at the National Institutes of Health, where I got to spend even more time with medical professionals. And just of it for me was that I was able to spend so much time with doctors when I had questions and, and I could just ask tons and tons of questions. And it just became obvious to me that the people who I was meeting with weren't getting the amount of time with their doctors that I was getting, and they weren't getting the amount of answers that I was getting. As, as we started to brainstorm, to me, it just seemed so very important. Yes, we should be doing this because everyone should get the same opportunities that I'm getting, even though even to this day, I know that's not true. But we've tried to create an environment which is closer to being that truth, which is Let's give people more opportunity to have doctor time and to get an answers to their questions. And so that was a lot of the catalyst for Thyca was let's create an environment where people have access to good information, not just information, but to right. get good information, to get information at a level, whether you're really intellectual or you need less uh, sophisticated information, help people get the information they need to understand what they're going through and to be able to make better decisions. Equally, we wanted to create an environment uh, which was supportive where people could connect one-on-one -on -one or in groups. And to me, that's one of the great parts about Thyca is the opportunity to put patients with other patients. You can have your doctor time, but you can also sometimes get uh, clarity that you don't get from your doctor appointments. Uh, but equally, you want to talk to patients in an environment where patients are sharing. We don't give medical advice. We just, right. we're there to share our experiences so that when I speak to someone who's newer, they can walk away saying, I feel like I have a better understanding of what's going to happen in the next couple of days, weeks, or months. That's remarkable. And, you know, it's so similar to my reasoning for starting Save Your Thyroid because patients feel overwhelmed and they have a million questions and sometimes they just need to talk with another patient. And I'll really yes. quickly tell my story about how, how I started Save Your Thyroid. It all came from 
an encounter with another patient. And it, had it not been for my encounter with her, which happened through Facebook, I would have been so much more anxious going into my RFA procedure. But she and I bonded through this experience of her answering my questions, calming my fears, you know, and to this day, we are still really good friends. And she and I are the founders of Save Your Thyroid. So I love the similarities there. So obviously, Save Your Thyroid is about helping people who are trying to avoid thyroid surgery. But what's the mission of Thyca? So Thyca's mission is to educate and support the global thyroid cancer community and to invest in research. It's a lot of words, but breaking it down, it's about education and support and also investing in research. So we're trying to make a difference in individuals' journeys today and tomorrow. And then with the research, we're trying to help make change in, in our care and treatment over the long term. I love that. We've already kind of talked a little bit or alluded a little bit about the kind of connection or the similarities between our two organizations. Why don't you tell the story of how we met a couple of years ago? Now it's dangerous because what if I get it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'll correct you if I need to. <laughs> so my recollection, we met uh, thanks to uh, introduction by Ralph Tufano. You know, he he just emailed and said we should connect. It was uh, just the joy of when we finally did connect. I mean, it was a couple of emails followed by a series of very long phone calls. I mean, it was just right. <laughs> I, I think candidly, we're both talkers, but I, I think that we found um, joy and happiness in, in uh, reflecting upon why we are doing what we're doing. Yes. Um, you in the immediacy of it, meaning a short term at that point, and me, it's been more than 25 years now. It, it speaks to the fact that what you're uh, attempting to do today is something that I've done for a longer time. And it's mm -hmm. there's still that same joy so many years later. And so I, I can project for you, you have the opportunity to stick with this for a very long time if you want. And make a difference in just so many people's lives. I mean, it amazes me that in the time I've known you, Save Your Thyroid has grown from a relatively small at the time organization to now more than 7,500 members. And it just speaks to how important this mission is. There are a lot of people who want to save their thyroid, something that for very uh, real reasons I couldn't do. Right. I, I had to have my entire thyroid removed. But when we first started talking at the time, this kind of a concept, Save Your Thyroid's mission, was really more about benign thyroid disease. And now today, that's changing. I mean, right. there, there is a, a true overlap between what we're doing because the mission, which did extend to thyroid cancer more as what I guess I would call a follow-up treatment option, now is is being used as a first line treatment option for appropriate candidates. And you know, we can both be clear it's not for everyone, but right. there is an excitement to the fact that what SQIT, Save Your Thyroid, is doing is trying to make sure patients are aware of options and so that if their doctor doesn't offer them this as a treatment option, they can bring it up themselves. And that's the same thing. That's exactly what Thyca's mission really is. When it's not our mission, patients be the best patient they can be, so that when they go into their doctor meetings, they know good questions to ask, right? Um, and they're ready for when the doctor doesn't offer information. And that's not to say their doctor isn't good, but sometimes the doctor doesn't think about a treatment path for a certain patient for one reason or another. I'm mm -hmm. not going to speculate on what that is. If I'm an informed patient, I can go into my doctor appointment and say, would I be a candidate to not have a, a partial or hemithyroidectomy? Let the doctor explain, no, you're not a candidate for that. Or absolutely, we could consider the alcohol ablation or RFA or microwave ablation. For me, I think that's okay if the patient initiates that conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, it also, it says to the doctor, that I'm I'm a knowledgeable patient, and, right. and I want that. I want to be involved in my care. And I've interviewed so many doctors who've told me that the patients who are pursuing these thermal ablations are motivated patients. So it's important to continue educating them because that's the way 
We have more patients who improve their outcomes, preserve their quality of life, avoid any unnecessary surgeries. As you said, some patients can't avoid surgery, but when they can, it's a real amazing outcome in the future. So I think our collaboration between our two organizations, like you said, it just makes sense. We have the same mission, even if it's for, you know, ours is predominantly for benign and then yours is for cancer, but there's an overlap. You know, there's a number of patients in our community, especially right now, who are seeking uh, thermal ablations for cancer. And then, of course, for the metastatic lymph nodes after a thyroidectomy, there are uh, more patients reaching out for that. So um, I don't want to get too deep into that before we start talking about the conference, because that's that's going to be an important topic there. So Let's talk about the 26th International FICA Conference that's coming up soon. So first of all, who is this conference for? Conference is primarily focused for patients, all thyroid cancer patients on a complete spectrum. They could be people who haven't even been truly diagnosed with thyroid cancer, but they, they've been identified as having a problem which has mm-hmm. not been determined whether it's benign or malignant yet. Uh, all the way to we have people who are 40 and 50 years survivors. So wow. this is not an event which is only for people who are deep in the throes of any treatment they would have. Equally, our meeting is directed to people who have all different types of thyroid cancer as an umbrella called differentiated thyroid cancer, which would include papillary and follicular and oncocytic uh, thyroid cancers, as well as uh, medullary thyroid cancer, poorly differentiated and anaplastic thyroid cancers. We will have patients with all these different types of thyroid cancer join us either in person or virtually, and we'll have doctors join us both in person and virtually who will share their knowledge about current treatments, trials that are going on, and try to help raise the understanding and and knowledge of our patients. The idea is not every patient can go to a thyroid cancer expert, right? but every patient can come to the FICA conference, which I should add is free. Uh, Yes. So whether you travel, which is not free, of course, or whether you just get online in, in the comfort of your own home, the conference registration is free. We want people to come and share and, and walk away with as much knowledge as they can. You can meet some of the specialists from all over the country. If you're not seeing a specialist or you're seeing someone, a doctor, and you're, you don't feel like your doctor is treating you the way you hear about the care at the like conference, you can suggest to your doctor, would you be willing to get in touch with Dr. So-and-so who participate at the conference. And those doctors will take the, the calls from local doctors or doctors who don't participate in the conference. And what it is, it's an opportunity to share differences in treatment thoughts. Now, a patient who comes to the conference and hears exactly what they want to hear may not have truly heard what they hope to have heard. So that they're that conversation between their doctor and this expert who made a presentation may not quite work out the way the patient thought it would, but at least the opportunity is there to validate that um, you're getting good care from your doctor at home. Yes. And that's, that's what we're trying to create is this environment where patients are truly getting the best care they can. I absolutely love that idea of having the these experts collaborate with your doctor back at home. And I think that you're providing an amazing opportunity there, Gary, for these physicians and patients to meet each other, collaborate, share their experiences and learn from one another. So conference, we've already talked about what it's about. And you mentioned, where is it taking place? So Denver, Colorado, you want to give some more details on the location? The conference specifically is at the Doubletree by Hilton Hotel in Denver. And the address is 3203 Quebec Street in Denver. And you can get to that information, if you weren't able to write it down that quickly, by going to psyche.org and selecting the link for a conference on our website. As I'm looking at uh, my background on my uh, on my Zoom, uh, I noticed that I have last year's uh, hashtag on my <laughs> over my shoulder. That should be <laughs> hashtag psycheconf23. So that that's that's an oops for me. It should be easy for you to find the information about the conference. And once once you find the conference webpage, you can get to the information about the hotel if you want to join us in person. You can see our speaker list. 
you can register. And again, registration is, is free. If you have any trouble, you can always write to us at thyka at thyka.org. And that's thyka spelled T-H-Y-C-A. We'll be happy to help uh, walk you through any of uh, the frustrations you may be having with any aspect of participating in the conference. And I will put all of the information, the links and whatnot in the description of this video. So anyone watching who wants to find those links, just look in the description below. So the dates for the <laughs> conference are October 13th through 15th, 2023. Sessions are throughout each day. As Gary said, you can participate virtually and all of the instructions for that will come once you register. We will record sessions. Uh, yes. At the conference. So whether you come in person and you'll see that we run five concurrent sessions and you say, oh, I, I wanted to go to this one, but I didn't want to miss that one. We'll uh, record the sessions and put them up on our YouTube channel after the fact. Whether there were multiple sessions you wanted to see at the same time or you had a wedding that weekend or you know whatever, the meeting will be captured for you. So it's very important to me that people know that this is not a, oh, I missed it because it was October 13th and 15th, and that was it. The meeting is there for you for the, uh, well, for years and years to come. Uh, yes. Right now, you can go out to our YouTube channel and watch videos from last year's meeting, other interviews with doctors that we've recorded over time. We have a very robust uh, YouTube channel of information that you can benefit from as well. Why, Gary, should patients participate in this conference? So why should people come to the meeting? Uh, there's sort of two different answers I like to give. One is simply for the education of it. You, you get to learn from expert doctors. You get to hear what's new in, in the world of thyroid cancer care and management. And you get to hear from patients who have walked that journey before you. Equally, you get to experience what I'll call survivorship type topics, which as, as they should will include things like, I am fortunate that I am disease free or my disease is under control. And not only do I want to go back to the life that I had, but maybe this is an, uh, this is my wake up call that I want to change things up a little bit. So it's a chance to, whether it's to talk to some kind of an expert about uh, survivorship opportunities or just to talk to another survivor. Sometimes people will, will talk about how this was their moment where they decided to change up their life and, and uh, you know, go back to school and, and, I don't know, become a gym teacher instead of being a captain of industry or whatever it is. But we, we do meet people who have changed their, their uh, life journey because suddenly they realized I, I've had a cancer experience and I, I just was every day doing, making, uh, just doing the same thing and I wasn't happy. And so here I had this opportunity to think things. I like that. But the real thing that, and certainly if you come in person, you get to hug people. Yeah. You, you, you get, you get the experience of being with other people who have thyroid cancer. Now, I'm not going to diminish what we have here in you and I because we're, we're as close as two people can be. In, in our contemporary existence where we're sitting yeah. staring at each other on a Zoom page. I really like to see people in person. I still like to shake hands. I like to pat people on the back. And I just like to be friendly with people. And there's just to me, there's just a certain warmth. The people who come to our meeting, some of them are first timers and they really don't know what to expect. And it's it's a really cool experience to see the the difference between when they show up either Thursday night or Friday morning and they don't really look sure of themselves and come Sunday, they just, they, they look like they belong. They're, they're with friends now. They've made friends over the last 12, 24, 36 hours and they're more at peace and they're going to go home most times with a cancer buddy, someone that they're going to know. This is the first person I'm going to reach out to when I have any confusion or questions as I go forward. And I just think that's an amazing experience. Absolutely. I love that so much. And I agree. There's definitely an amazing connection now that you can have with someone virtually, but connecting with someone in real life and hugging them, you know, the first time I got to meet Eileen, I was just, I was so thrilled to see her in the flesh. So um, Eileen is my co-founder with uh, save your thyroid. So if anyone wants to register, go to thyca.org. I hope people will join us, uh, I, whether again, whether you come in person or virtually, 
I think it's a great experience. If you know of people who have thyroid cancer, I encourage you to share this with them so that they know about this opportunity and then they can make their own decisions. And Jen, I want to thank you for the opportunity to share all that. Well, it's a pleasure having you on here, Gary. And you know, something I need to mention that I totally skipped over was the fact that we're going to be having two sessions at the conference on thermal ablation for thyroid cancer. So patients who are newly diagnosed and are looking for radiofrequency ablation or laser ablation or alcohol ablation for thyroid cancer or for metastatic lymph nodes, those are for patients who've already had a thyroidectomy. We'll have two sessions on that. We'll have a a number of physicians moderating those discussions. And I think it's going to be a really, really great opportunity for patients to learn more about these newly emerging treatments available in the United States, which have been done all over the world for close to two decades now. But here in the U.S., we're starting to see a huge uptick in these procedures being made available to patients. So I'm really excited about that. And I hope we'll have a great turnout. And I I want to follow up by saying the people who attend that session don't have to have thyroid cancer because this is FICA's conference. This is a session that is really for the Savior Thyroid community. So uh, I hope that the members of the Savior Thyroid community will come because, again, the meeting is free and they can come only to those few sessions. They're welcome to stay for the survivorship type sessions if they are interested. They can poke through our agenda. And as an example, they'll find that we have discussions on uh, taking thyroid hormones. If they are on thyroid hormone, maybe they could use some touch up if, of how they're taking their medication. I say the same thing to the people who would come the thermal ablation type sessions, as I say to everyone. The conference is here. We hope you'll avail yourself of as little or as much of the meeting as works for you. And so again, thank you for the opportunity to share all that. Thank you for telling us all about the conference, Gary. I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a great opportunity. Anyone who wants to watch the sessions we did last year at the 2022 conference, as Gary said, those videos are available on the Thyka YouTube channel. Um, So Gary, any patients who are watching this video who want to join Thyka, how can they do that? Thyka does have a truly have a what we call a membership uh, option, but candidly, it's really a form of fundraising. Anyone who is diagnosed with thyroid cancer is a member of Thyka, pure and simply. And we hope that they will see what our resources are, come to the website, look at our website, and see that we have educational uh, materials both on the website itself as well as the ability to either download materials or request hard copies, and we'll mail hard copies to anyone anywhere in the world free of charge, single copies and in bulk. Everything is about making the patient experience a better experience. And your website is robust. I absolutely love the amount of information and resources you have available there. I've been in a number of physician's offices and seen the Thyka materials laid out for patients to take advantage of. Oh, fantastic. So, you know, what you're doing as an organization is touching so many people's lives. And I hope that Save Your Thyroid can do the same for patients who are looking to avoid thyroid surgery. Anyone who wants to join Thyka, go to thyka.org. Anyone who wants to join Save Your Thyroid, right now we are mostly on Facebook. So you can go to the link in the description below for the Save Your Thyroid Facebook community. But in the future, we will have more resources available outside of Facebook. Currently, we do have a website, a very simple website, not up to par with Thyka's, but saveyourthyroid.org is available now. And we have on that website, a number of resources, including a list of providers who do provide thermal ablation procedures for thyroid nodules. Fantastic. Congratulations on all your hard work. (laughs) And anyone who wants to volunteer their time to either organization, but how would they be able to do that with Thyka? So we do have an opportunity for people to volunteer uh, through a website through the, I think it's called Get Involved, or they can just email thyka at thyka.org and, and express their desire to volunteer. And typically, if someone comes to us in that fashion, the first question we're going to ask is, what is your interest? Uh, because one of the things I've learned is that a lot of people don't want to volunteer in a way that is comparable to what they do for a living. They, they want to be as far away from their professional lives as possible. So that makes sense. Uh, you know, so 
I don't like to typecast people. I like to hear what's on their mind. We're always looking for people to volunteer. You know, the easiest way to volunteer is just to mention to your own doctor about FICA or to include in your email signature some information about FICA. Truly at a minimal, minimalist level, it's simple. Just put FICA.org below your, your name. You go from there to you could be involved. In our case, we have newsletters and a lot of material that require editing and updating. And so we're always just thankful for people who come forward and want to help. Excellent. Yes. Any Anyone who wants to offer their time to this message, um, I, th- I definitely believe is appreciated. So anyone who wants to give back to this organization that's helping so many patients on their thyroid cancer journey, you can go to thyca.org. And there is a button at the top that says donate and you can give uh, any gift, no matter how big or small, to help advocate for patients suffering with thyroid cancer. Gary, do you have any other thoughts you want to share? No, I'd just like to thank you for this opportunity to talk about our two organizations and different ways and the similar ways that we're both striving to make the patient journey a better experience. And so thank you for all of your great work that you're doing, Jen. And kudos to you and keep it up. And I look forward to seeing you uh, in in the not too distant future. Thank you so much, Gary. I can't, I just can't thank you enough for your mentorship, for everything you've taught me about doing this work. It's been absolutely amazing getting to know you and learning everything that I have learned from you. You've been a wonderful teacher. So thank you. Nice. You've been you've been an inspiration to me. And wow. I am looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks at the American Thyroid Association Conference in Washington, D.C. So everyone who's watching, stay tuned for updates coming from ATA meeting. Are you coming to the Thyca Conference? Will you be attending virtually or in person? If so, let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for listening. Please share this content and help others. If you need resources, testimonials, and support, please join our patient community, Save Your Thyroid. You can also find me on social media and Substack under the media handle, It's Me Jenica. Never forget to educate yourself and be your own advocate and save your thyroid.